Okay, so this is Tekken 5. Um, gonna be playing a little bit of this and just sort of uh, blathering on indulging in my private vice which is energy drinks um, so I recently moved to the United States I recently got married um, and I have had the unique privilege of being able to try all these American drinks uh, for the first time. Let me tell you, these things are absolutely fucking deathly. These things will just kill you stone fucking dead. They are dangerous. Um, they are so much more addictive than the European varieties. Um, and it must be that high fructose corn syrup, which is illegal in Europe. Or at least it's certainly illegal in the UK, and it's fair to assume that it's illegal in France, Germany, and the like. Can't see the Italians having much use for it. Um, it's fucking Moorish, man. I'm telling you now, you drink a couple of these fucking Rippets or Mountain Dew Kickstarts or whatever your fucking preference is, wherever your brand allegiance lies, you throw a couple of these bad boys down and, uh, you know, you feel that much closer to a heart attack. And then two, three hours later, you get this craving, this terrible... Uh, like, just, you know, you don't feel quite complete, and you want more. It's, uh, it's not like the European drinks. It's just so much more potent. Like, it's, uh, no, not potent. Potent's the wrong word. Potent would, would, uh, imply that, that the delivery of caffeine to your systems is like more efficient and you get more of a burst, more of a high and I, you really don't, in fact I think in terms of like caffeination and like caffeination deployment and the satisfaction derived from like a nice big fucking burst of Red Bull or whatever I feel like the, 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 the American um, products are like slightly inferior to the Europeans. Like I feel like in the UK Rockstar has a bit more of a zing to it, you know, a bit more of a you know like, you know, you uh, you drink a can of Rockstar in the UK, you drink two and you are fucking buzzing. You are like you know, you're Sonic the fucking hedgehog for the next hour and a half. You are just bazookered. Uh, and you pay the price for it but it works. Whereas here in America, it's just forever, it's forever falling short just a little bit. It's just more like soda, you know? It's more like Mountain Dew. These Rippets, which I drink because they're 99 cents, which is the cheapest that I've seen an energy drink in America. 99 cents is like 75 pence in the UK, which is pretty cheap. Um, but as far as I can tell, ingredients are largely the same as your Monsters, or your Red Bulls, or uh, your Rockstar. They all start out with carbonated water and high fructose corn syrup, taurine, citric acid, uh, flavourings, caffeine, 
usually there's some guarana involved, which, you know, fuck me, I've been drinking energy drinks for half my life and I still don't know what guarana is. Um, I always get it confused with, like, bat guano or something, because it sounds so similar, but... Um, is this recording my voice? It is. Just checking. Anyway, let's play some Tekken 5. I don't mean to waste your time. But you're watching this. So presumably, you've got the time. Um, I am not recording sound. Am I recording audio? Hmm. I don't know if I'm recording audio. I don't know if you're deriving audio from this. Well, we'll wait and see, won't we? We'll find out. We'll find out the, the hard way. Um, I feel relatively confident. Fuck, are we playing Paul? Shit. Okay, well, OBS issues notwithstanding. We're playing as Paul Phoenix. I don't know if you've got the game audio or not. I hope that you haven't. But if you do, great, I guess. Um, I didn't really want to play, Paul. For your information, this version of Tekken is an emulation. I'm using the PS2 emulator software, which means that it's not as Tekken 5 was meant to be enjoyed, it's not quite as crisp, it's not quite as fresh, and there's quite a significant degree of latency on my inputs, which means that I'm probably not going to be as quick on the uptake as I would be if I was using a PS2 and a traditional controller. But no, it's all just the J, K, L, and O key, uh, and Wasad, and Spacebar, and there we are. So yeah, came to America, got married, living here, trying to find work, had a job, lost a job, had another job, lost a job. Not because I was a, a bad employee or anything of the like, but merely because United States Civil Immigration Services, USCIS, they do not want me working, and they are not willing to facilitate the process of finding work for me. Which means that, at present, I have a very shaky means of income. Which is to say that I don't really have an income at all. I did have an income, and now I don't. Um, because I was working off the books for a dodgy Italian restaurant slash pizzeria. And, um, you know, I, I, have, I have standards in the workplace, and uh, a lot of my peers didn't, and it was getting to me. A lot of drug use there, more than I was comfortable with. It went beyond the occasional toke on the bong or whatever. Got people doing uh, what they assume is coke. Um, so, you know, I got the fuck out of Dodge. I took the hit. Went to find something else. Found something else. And then lost it because I don't have a green card. Which is a shame, you know, I, I'm here, I'm interested in being a contributor to society at large, I'm interested in doing my part, you know, wanna pay taxes, wanna be involved in the political process, wanna be a, a worthwhile member of the community, um, wanna do my bit to pay for the roads and the sewers, and uh, the fire department, and all that. You know, you want to cook some food for some people. You know, don't want to be a leech. 
Anyway, Paul's here. He's in the treasure pit, talking to a bear. Like a typical American, he doesn't give a crap about anybody else, which is very much the case. Uh, you know, it, uh, all those stereotypes about Americans that you hear about from, uh, you know, from overseas, wherever you might be, you know, presumably, if you're watching this, you're somebody I know, but you might not be, you know, you might... You know, a year from now, this might be posted to a YouTube channel, which gets viewers from all over the world. You could be anywhere. Um, but yeah, all those stereotypes about, you know, dumb, arrogant, America, uh, a lot of truth. That's all I can say. <laughs> you know, I never believed it. I always thought, oh, this is an exaggeration, you know, they're mischaracterized. No, there's a, there's a lot of truth. Oh, god damn. Somebody call the RSPCA because I'm about to do some very naughty things to this bear. If you'll let me, which I don't think you will. Hmm. Playing Tekken one handed. Not doing too bad. Oh, fuck. You know, this bear moves with the grace of a much smaller mammal. Which is a poncy thing to say really, isn't it? It's um, a bit of a try hard, try, try hard, pretend to be funny kind of thing to say because I'm a Let's Player. And God damn it, if there's one thing that Let's Players like to do, it's try too hard to be funnier than they are. And I know because I've been doing this for many a year. I've done this since 2013? 2014, maybe. I've done this for a good 3-4 years, on and off. I've watched more hours of YouTube Let's Plays than I would care to admit. Dangerous amounts of Let's Play viewership. Um, you know. But it seemed necessary at the time. You know, I consider it a certain kind of art form, actually. I got a tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of enjoyment out of watching people play video games. Of course, it wasn't really all about the games, it was uh, very, uh, sort of tangentially about video games. I mean, there are certain, they're, they're a safe kind of hobby, aren't they, you know? Nobody's going to give you respect for being an enthusiast of gaming, but... Nobody's going to give you too much grief over it either. Except maybe a certain kind of woman. Which is fine. You can handle it. You're a big boy, you can handle that. You can handle the occasional sneer of a girl who's saying, Oh, video games, isn't it? I mean, there's a certain truth to it as well. They're, uh, they're not exactly the most intelligent medium. Oh. This close. This close. There's OBS again. Put that away. I've got another can of Rippets in the fridge. Freezer, actually. I should probably take that shit out. I'm gonna see if I can take Kuma down. And then we'll refuel. God, he's got some reach on him, hasn't he? Did you see that arm then? Yeah, tremendous reach. Almost like a. Fucking Mr. Fantastic! Oh shit! That is pure cheese. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I tried to get the burning fist off. Look at that! Paul Phoenix's notorious burning fist. Back, back, square triangle. You know, moderately long wind up for ninety percent damage. And I, I should have made contact, but this fucking ten-foot bear with his cheeky little grin and his circus manoeuvres with his Cirque du Soleil bullshit somehow evaded it. 
And now he's pounding me into the dirt, like I owe him money. What have I done to this bear? Why is... Oh, God. You know, I want to make a joke about Timothy Treadwell, but... I don't... I don't know what to say. Oh, fuck. God damn. Anyway, so yeah, I've been playing quite a little, well, not a great deal of Tekken recently, but enough. You know, I probably put that three, four hours in in the last week, just because it's something I can play. Um, you know, you can you can jump in, jump out, 20 minutes here, half an hour there. I like to have a cup of coffee and just sort of fuck around with it. Um, still haven't beaten the final boss, though. Even on easy mode, he's uh, completely unaccommodating. He just will not fucking let me get around in on him. Um, and if we're lucky, we'll get to that point again where I can show you exactly why he's so frustrating. Not that you particularly care, of course. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not expecting that any of you are on the edge of your seats saying to yourselves, come on Simon, show me what the final boss of Tekken 5 is all about. No, uh, you don't care. But uh, that's alright, that's alright. Fucking Winnie the Pooh will not let me... Ooh, that was tasty. Give me credit for that one. Yeah. I reckon I've got this. He's gonna run into my burning fist. Oh, no, he's not. Fuck. Shit. Oh, really? What was I saying? It's difficult. It's uh, it's not an easy game. At least not when you're playing with the keyboard. I feel like it would be easier if I had a controller. Um, but you know. I'm I'm emulating this on my life <laughs> on my wife's laptop. I think I was about to say life's laptop. Um, but yeah, I'm emulating this on my wife's laptop, and I can't seem to get my Dual Shock to work, and the latency is pretty bad, and it makes for a pretty pulling off combos as well is not easy. So it makes for a pretty sort of. Uh, it makes for a very different kind of Tekken experience. Anyway, I'm just going to nip over there and uh, reload with a can of Rip it. And, you know, if you're playing along at home, make yourself a coffee, do what you got to do, crack open a beer if that's what you do. Um, stay away from the ganja, though. Weed's no good for you. I mean, alcohol's no good for you either. Fuck, man. Red Bull's no good for you, but... Weed is not as harmless as people make out. Anyway. Uh, be patient. Be patient. Will the sound of my voice retain a viewing audience, even when I'm away from the camera, Remains to be seen. Anyway, uh, seeing as you were good enough to wait, um, rip it. Energy tribute CYP dash X. The thing about rip it, and we don't have this in Europe, as far as I'm aware. We certainly don't have it in the UK. I would know all about it. Uh, although you might be able to find it in some of those very dodgy. Um, Pound shoppy type places, um, and you know nobody there will be able to tell you how it got there. But sometimes you will see some uh, really strange kind of drinks. I, re I remember seeing a No Fear branded energy drink, which I tried and I didn't think too much of, but it was like thirty pence for a big can. But you won't see Ripper. Ripper is very much an American energy drink, and uh, the interesting thing about Rippet is that it's got ties to the US military. Uh, if you look at the can, there's a little silhouette of a shot, 
soldier, sorry, silhouette of a soldier down at the bottom of the cam. Uh, it also says, see how Rippet is supporting our troops, go to rippetenergy.com, which you won't be doing. Um, but there you go. And uh, a little piece of trivia, because I'm sad. I, I did the research. You'll notice as well, like, the sort of, like, Action Man. I, I, honestly, every time I look at these cans, I just think of Action Man, because it's got that kind of, like, camo pattern. It looks like the splitter camo from Metal Gear Solid 3. And it's got that uh, assault army style of text on it. But yeah, apparently the boys in Iraq are absolutely fucking rabid for this stuff. It's the energy drink of choice in Iraq. Uh, and, you know, sort of like the Afghan theatre of war. Um, presumably because it's so cheap. And the company themselves have, like, really capitalised on this because pretty much all of their flavours come with this sort of military, assault camo kind of uh, artwork style, and they'll be named things like... Well, I mean, the last can that I cracked over... Red, white and blue. Tribute. Cherry lime, and I believe it says somewhere that it's meant to be a tribute to our serving veterans or something, and to like the American way of life, which is fucking hysterical, really. But uh, it's only meant with like the faintest trace of irony. I think somewhere someone thinks that you know, I don't know, never mind, it, it, it boggles me, it, it's beyond me. Yeah, that's the idea of calling it tribute, is that it's meant to be a thing for the uh, the serving men and women. Anyway, bottoms up. I have no idea what CYPX stands for. Presumably it's military jargon. Alright, this smells kind of like tangerine. You know what this smells like? Terry's chocolate orange. And I've never had an energy drink that tasted or smelled anything like a Terry's chocolate orange. But specifically, this does smell like Terry's chocolate orange. Because if you ever like if you smell like an orange, it's got like a sort of freshness, like a zinginess about it. But this has like kind of a dull, deep orangey smell. And it is exactly, it could even be the same fucking flavouring. It smells exactly like the sort of chocolatey, orangey smell that you get when you open a Terry's. Which was not what I was expecting. I was looking at this and thinking it might be ginger, like ginger and orange. I was expecting like a spiciness. But nope, it's, uh, it's not that, so let's, let's see. Oh my fucking god. What the fuck? I'm not joking. It tastes like a Terry's chocolate orange. It's got like a chocolatey note to it. I'm not shitting you. Look at this. It looks like orange soda, yeah? It looks like a fucking, uh, looks kind of like a glass of Fanta, but it tastes kind of chocolatey. Not massively, not to the point of revulsion, but it's got that sort of hint to it. Now that it's out of the can, it smells a bit more like orange soda. That is bizarre. That is one of the weirdest energy drinks I've ever had. And I've been drinking these things for a long time. It tastes like orange, but more than that, it tastes kind of like caramel. It's like chocolate caramel and it looks and smells and tastes a little bit like orange but it, I think mostly the aftertaste is very much one of caramel do I recommend it? alright, hang on so it starts out It starts out with like the implication that it's orange. It's got three layers. 
it starts out with like the implication that it's orange. First wash around the mouth is like orange, kind of. Like a sort of muted orange, like a dull orange. Then it goes into like a caramel, which is like the main flavour. Goes into like a caramel, um, exactly the same as you'd get in like a, a dairy milk caramel or something, like just pure caramel. And then afterwards, the final like the, the aftertaste at the back of your mouth is like chocolate. And I don't know if I like that. I think it's uh, it's very strange. It would not be what what I would want in an energy. You know, I've never had a soda or a, a can of pop that tasted like chocolate or caramel. Um, it's fucking weird. And it's drinkable as well. It's not revolting. It's a little bit sickly. Um, but it's it's tolerable. I'll drink it. I won't buy another can of it, but I'll drink it now. Who thought that that was what people wanted? I don't know if that's like... You see, America kind of has like racial sodas. Um, fuck, I can't. This bear is beating my ass into the dirt, man. Like, ugh. And that is going to become a common thread for the rest of the video. Is that I'm just going to get crushed by the AI over and over and over again. In fact, I'm going to change my character. Excuse me, sorry, I'm belching on camera. Um, and I'm sorry about my hair as well. Actually, I'm not sorry about it, but I'm aware that it doesn't look particularly good. Um, because, you know, I've done it myself. Well, my, my wife had a run at it. My wife had a run at it, and uh, that's what I'm looking for. My wife had a run at it, and then I sort of touched it up a little. Um, so... It hasn't been done by a, a barber. Right, we're going to change it up. Uh, I quite like playing Raven, actually. I'm a pretty big Raven fan. I like Yoshimitsu a lot. I'm quite fond of Brian, but he's difficult to play. Uh, Feng's pretty good as well. He's kind of a heavy hitter. Um, but I'm going to go with... I'm gonna go with Nina. I like Nina a lot. Nina's got some pretty cool tools. She's got some moves at her disposal. Uh, I don't like the costume. Makes her look like a blackjack dealer. Makes her look like she works in a casino. Or like a uh, off-brand Bond girl. Ooh, that's a combo. Christy is probably my least favourite character to face after the final boss. I think the final boss is called, I think it's Jin Pachi. He's got a mouth in his chest and he vomits fireballs which are completely unavoidable. Um, and he's just a nause to fight. Nause being slang for nauseating, you probably don't know that one, but now you do. Um, he's just a pain. He's no fun. But after that, it's Christy. Christy and Julia Chang that I really don't like fighting. Because they are just difficult to predict. Marduk, on the other hand, hulking beast man that he is. He's a nice big fat target. He's slow as shit. And uh, he's actually not as powerful as you might think. Perfect. He's actually not all that. If he gets a hit on, on in on you, if he 
if he gets a blow in. It'll do about as much damage as any other character, honestly. Uh. I mean, all the characters in Tekken, or at least in Tekken 5, with the, with the exception of like a, like a couple, Lee's not particularly powerful. Um, but most of the characters, they deal pretty hardcore damage. Um, I mean, Nina is, like, a fucking damage dealer. Most of the characters will smash you up. I mean, look at that, like, two minutes, and I've got him down to, like, a third of his health. Two perfects. Nina's fucking quality in this game. I always avoided playing girls in fighting games, because I, I was... I'm pretty sexist, like... You know, and, and I don't like that. I don't like the dominatrixy kind of character, right? I, I don't like the dominatrixy kind of characterization. Uh, and I, you know, I, here's something that I will have in common with like the um, the more touchy women viewers. You know, I don't like. Well, I don't dislike. Actually, yeah, I do kind of dislike the overt sexuality because it's kind of it's kind of gross. If it was a bit more like, um, you know, if it was a bit more nuanced, if it was like sexy, like sort of like Bond girl sexy, rather than just like big meaty breasts in like a cat suit or whatever, maybe I I wouldn't mind it as much, but. It's uh, it goes beyond being exploitative because it's meant to be kind of campy. Uh, it's kind of meant to be campy and exploitative. It goes beyond that to becoming just kind of disgusting. So I don't really like it, um, which was one of the reasons why I never really played female characters. Although I have always liked Kunimitsu, um, one because she plays a lot like Raven. Um, she's got a lot of like cool backflips and things, which I always quite like. And two, uh, because she's the most modestly dressed girl character in the Tekken franchise. Um, you know, she shows a bit of leg, but other than that, she's pretty well covered up. So I quite liked playing Kunimitsu. I felt like she was uh, the most modest female character, and uh, therefore she was sort of safe to play. Um, so yeah, Kunimitsu notwithstanding, I've always avoided female fighting game characters. But I'm over it. I got over it. Um, <laughs> I got over it because simply because they're fun to play. Um, Nina is really enjoyable to play. She's probably she's in my top three characters uh, for Tekken Five. Probably Nina, Yoshimitsu, and Raven. I did used to quite like playing Lee, but lately he's seemed kind of unsatisfying. He doesn't quite dish it out the way I'd like him to. Um, yeah, it's sort of like Horong with a... Uh, it's like a slower version of Horong with a few more punches, you know, not quite there. He's not... he just doesn't have the sense of weight that I want him to have. Oh. Uh, yeah, still wiping the floor with me though. I always liked Lee's dress mannerisms. It's sort of like the sort of shit that I might wear. He's got like a lurid waistcoat, silvered boy band hair, and Doc Martens, you know. I like those kind of characters. Quite fond of Vega from Street Fighter as well. It was similar sort of mold. You know, I kind of like these sort of like vain K-pop type fighting game characters. They all look like they're members of some sort of Japanese band, but they tend to play quite well. They tend to be live, quick, sort of rush down kind of builds. Um, you know, and usually they've got a bit of flash, and I like that in a fighting game character. I like a bit of flash. You know, I don't like your Marduk type characters 
all your basic bitch kind of characters. Like Lay, you know, Lay's a bit sort of basic bitch. Or like Ken from Street Fighter, you know, like it's just boring, you know, it needs a bit of pizzazz. I mean, I know we can throw fireballs, but, you know, I've seen that shit before. Show me something I haven't seen. I want to see a guy do like a triple corkscrew through the air and snap somebody's head off. Not in real life. <laughs> you could take that out of context, it would almost be funny. Take it out of contact. Uh, I want to see a guy do a triple corkscrew through the air and snap a man's head off. Uh. Oh god, my legs. Uh, I like this Jin Kazama costume as well. Uh, it's nice. I've always kind of liked the way that Jin looks. Ooh. Yeah. Very expensive silken tracksuity kind of thing with tasteless decals. And he's got like the edgy flame decals that you used to see on three quarter lengths back in like 2004, which was when this game was being made. 2004 it was in development then. So I don't know. Sort of looks like what every 12 year old wishes they looked like. So I like it, you know, it's good. And he's fluid as well, he's got like a sort of fluidity, he's not your typical Mishima character. He's not like Kazuya or Hiachi, he's got more like flow. He's fun to play, he's fun to fight as well actually. Ooh, that's why I like Nina, is she's got some crazy unpredictable kind of flippy combo type shit it's just you don't know what's going on you can't really call it but it's not like Christie where it's um, you know over exaggerated it's kind of almost I won't say it's subtle but it's more compacted kind of ninjutsu um, and that is what she's meant to be she's meant to be an assassin her fighting style is in fact ninjutsu. Um, ooh, painful. God almighty. This is what I mean about- oh, hey! Nice! I was not expecting that. You know what, I'm gonna lose the fight, but I'm glad I got that little move in on him. I'll watch that back later. <laughs> I'll watch that back and uh, take satisfaction in it. Yeah, good fight, this. Good matchup. I forget what I was saying, something about ninjutsu, which I know nothing about. You know, that's one of those things, one of those fighting styles that never really... You never see it in the real world. I don't know if it's a real thing or not. Fuck, that would have hurt. Ugh. Short range punches. Complete whiff. Ah well, good fight. But yeah, you'll see people advertising all sorts of martial arts. Do you want to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu, just like Joe Rogan. You want to learn that? There's a guy in your town who is willing to teach you Tenth Planet Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, you want to learn karate? Twelve guys know karate and are teaching karate near you within a five mile radius. You can learn it. Aikido. Hakido. Wanna learn that? There's a guy. Um, Kung Fu. You know? Judo. You wanna learn Judo? There's probably somebody who can teach you Judo. But nobody knows Ninjutsu. Nobody can teach you Ninjutsu. Which is a shame because it is probably the coolest sounding martial art. To the point where if you tell people that you practice ninjutsu, they will not believe you. Um, yeah, you know, in my spare time, I practice ninjutsu. Sounds, it sounds great, doesn't it? You wish that you were that guy. Hey, you don't. Perhaps you don't. Maybe you own a handgun. 
maybe you don't need to know ninjutsu. But I would like to be a guy who would practice ninjutsu. I would like to have that claim to fame. So yeah, here's Anna. The most revolting of all the Tekken girls. And you know, it's funny because she doesn't actually show quite as much flesh as the other ones. She's got like a full length dress. But it's the attitude, it's like the demeanour, it's like a drunk late thirties, early forties, mother of three, a recently divorced, on the prowl. It's gross, you know, it's like in those little intro sequences before the fight, she like shakes her breasts at you and says something doggish and trampish and it just kinda makes your skin crawl. It's it, it's it's funny ish. But not funny enough to make it fully bearable. And she doesn't play all that well either. I've always kind of given her a wide berth. Not only because of, you know, her characterization, but also just she doesn't quite flow. She doesn't really work as a character, I find. See what I mean? Yeah, she's got a lot of like ball stumpy type things, you know, that, like slaps, wenchy kind of slaps, um, arm locks, high heel kicks, and testicle stomping type moves. It's just not nice, and not particularly effective either. I don't think in the profession, like, not that I am at all interested in like professional Tekken but you know I've seen a bit of this and that and I, I'm aware that Anna is rarely a choice for the professional Tekken player and the fact is, is that I can't actually utter the words professional Tekken player with a straight face there is such a thing I mean professional people Maybe not, but do they play Tekken for a living? Yeah, some of them do. There's money to be made, not a great deal at the moment, but in the future maybe more. Apparently eSports is uh, it's no longer the province of the weird and the strange, but now it is in fact being looked at by mainstream journalism by publications such as the LA Times or the Wall Street Journal. You'll see it on the front page sometimes as a sort of an aside, you know, about the rise of esports. You know, Amazon is looking to invest, and indeed they sort of have because they own Twitch. They own Twitch. Every time you boot up Twitch, you will see League of Legends championships. You will see uh, CSGO on the front page. Championships, World Championship of CSGO. Um, you know, it's not not quite profitable yet, um, but one day it probably will be. People are putting money into it. People are giving it attention. Kids probably don't even want to be rock stars anymore. Um, they probably want to be rappers. Ooh, isn't that a nasty little move? Isn't that fucking vile? That little wiggly stomp. Kids don't want to be rock stars, they want to be rappers, or if they don't want to be a rapper, then they probably wouldn't mind being in a professional gaming house. Um, you know, they probably wouldn't mind that playing Call of Duty, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, on the big stage, playing for 50 grand, 100 grand, you know, that's interesting to them, that's a world that they kind of want to be a part of. I'm not saying that this is the case with all or even most kids, but certain kind of teenager 
certain kind of uh, kid. They look at it and they see something, you know, something exciting. And I've got to be honest, I've always found it difficult to watch like high level gameplay in these sort of competitive um, tournaments and be like super interested. I, you know, I've I've seen CS:GO championships and the like, like not not like fully engaged with it, but you know, I've I've watched like half an hour just to see what's going on kind of thing. You know, and you see guys getting headshots from afar, and it's just like your typical kind of albeit well played, it is sort of like your typical game of CSGO or whatever, it's like, I've seen CSGO, I've seen League of Legends, I've seen Street Fighter, yeah, they're playing it pretty well, but it's not enough to, like, make me watch through, like, an hour of post-match commentary, or, like, wait between rounds or whatever, you know, like, the, the whole, like, sportsman uh, sportsman-like kind of format that professional sports is presented in. Do you know what I mean? You know, like almost like match of the day kind of thing. I'm not going to get a win here. Oh, hang on, there we go. Got lucky. It's not enough to make me sort of like go for the whole thing. It's not that interesting. But the thing about that is like regular sports is not that interesting. You know, if you watch the NFL, if you watch basketball, if you watch football, I never found that interesting either. It's like, you know... So, maybe I'm the wrong person to appraise it. Maybe there is like a future in it where people will sit down with popcorn and beer and, you know, spend two and a half, three hours rooting for a team of eSports champions or whatever. Maybe that is where we are headed to. I probably won't be watching it, but, you know, maybe people other than myself will be. You know, like, normal people. Not just hobbyists, but like, the kind of people who watch the NFL. Anyway, here we are. We're at the end of Tekken 5 story mode. This is the final boss. This is the guy that I really do not like. Jinpachi Mishima. He is pure cheese. He is cheese distilled down to a concentrated form. He is like dairy fucking Lee. He's insufferable and he's got a mouth for a stomach and Dragon Ball Z powers and he's about to rinse me he's taller than the bear and yet somehow all my attacks will miss all my high kicks will whiff um, go figure patch the hitboxes as somebody used to say patch the fucking hitboxes um, so yeah, I'm gonna get pounded into the dirt for... Oh, hang on. Holy shit, I'm doing better than I thought. And I'm not even using the directional keys. I'm literally just mashing. There we go. There's the cheese. Goku Fireball. Completely unavoidable, and it will take off a full 50% of your life bar. Um... Right, well, excuse me. Uh, kind of want to, uh, kind of want to adjust my penis. Um, I'm not being rude. Not being rude. I'm just adjusting my junk. Sometimes you've got to do it. If you've got junk, you'll understand. If you don't got junk, take my word for it. Anyway, nice. 
You know, I, I've got the feeling that if any character can get me through this, it will be Nina. Oh my god, she fucking dodged it. She dodged a bullet. So they are avoidable. My understanding is that there are high fireballs and there are low fireballs. And the low fireballs you have to jump over and the high fireballs you have to duck. But the aforementioned latency that I was talking about um, makes it very difficult for me to do this. And he's got me. We could be here a while. I don't really have the patience to beat him, and there's not really any reward for me in doing so, so I will just play until I am frustrated enough to quit. Yeah, <sighs> not gonna happen. You know, this kind of reminds me of Senator Armstrong from Mel Gear Rising. That fireball is just unfair. Fuck, and again. I feel like he should get one of those. One of those a fight. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, tough shit. Use some of your other moves. I don't like that he can just spam that. And I'm sure that on the higher difficulties, this is medium. I could drop it down too easy, but it still wouldn't help, so we'll keep it where it is. Um, but I've, you know, look at that, starting the fight off with it. I've got no health. Game over. You know, not gonna win. Ugh, Nina. The things you do to me. How about that? Hey, she got me through. I don't know how. Something about those kicks did not compute with Jimpachi, which is cool. Yeah, I don't know, she just seems to have... She just seems to have the tools to get the job done. I like her, man. I like Nina. I've been here a few times with a few different characters. I've been here with Raven, who I thought was going to be the one to get it done. I've been here with Paul Phoenix, who didn't really stand a chance. Um, I've been here with Yoshimitsu. And I've never beaten him. Oh. What was that? What was that? How much health was there? Check back. Go back and have a look. That was more than half, surely. That must have been more than half health. I thought I had that. I really did. And he just rinsed me. Insta-death. <coughs> Gone. Game over. Because he's using projectiles. He's the only character who uses projectiles. This is a fighting game where the characters do not use projectiles. It's not a Street Fighter, but for the final boss, projectiles are a factor. I can't use them, but he can use them. And what's more, they are absolutely fucking lethal. Uh, come on, Nina. Oh, yes. How about that? Fucking girl power. How about that? Yeah, it was nothing. Fucking. Nina Williams, man. There's a reason she's been in the franchise since the first game. Uh, Nina, Nina fucking, fucking Williams. Williams. Movie, Movie director. director. Fucking fighting game story there. <laughs> movie, I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't sound like bullshit. Anyway, there we go. That, that was Tekken 5. five. I'll, I'll let you watch the ending movie. movie. I'm, I'm kind, kind of interested, interested myself. myself. Uh, uh, I don't know. What's Xena, the warrior princess? princess? I don't fucking get it. I don't, I don't understand, understand the context. context. I'm, I'm sure, sure in Japanese... Japanese it made a bit more sense, or maybe, maybe they just wanted to see some girls fight in costume. Well, I, I wash my hands of this, you know. 
I'm not, not all that interested, interested to be honest. <laughs> I don't even want to see how it ends. Uh, yeah. Uh, this has already, already gone, gone too long. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah of, of course. course. It's, it's like, like uh, blow it up. Think, think of all the innocence. innocence. Think of all the innocence. Film director. Lighting technicians. Um... The catering, catering people. people. All dead. All dead. All dead. Um, for, for no particular reason other than Nina Williams is a psychopath. Anyway, anyway that was second, second five. Thank, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope, hope this wasn't, wasn't a waste, waste of your time. time. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Have, have a good, good day. day. And I, I do mean that. Try and have, have a good day. day. Do what you got to do to make, make the day work for you. Um, go go easy, easy on yourself. yourself. Cut yourself some slack. Don't, Don't ride yourself, yourself into the dirt. dirt. Yeah. And on, on that, that note, I will definitely leave.